All right, well tomorrow, I head off to the Alvord Desert to start off the Eastern Oregon trip. But tonight, I'm just overnighting at a friend's house in Bend, and this is the accommodations, this totally charming vintage trailer. Well, this is a really nice way to start the trip. I'm a couple of hours closer to the destination, and uh, after a good night's sleep where I haven't been up late doing final preparations, I can get a nice early start tomorrow. All right, it's Saturday morning, and I'm headed east. This is the first leg of what will be my most ambitious adventure ever, setting out across the vast open deserts of eastern Oregon over the course of a week-long expedition in search of dramatic scenery in remote corners of the state. While most of my travel and exploration will be solo, I have plans to camp with a few different friends on a few of the nights. Tonight is one of those nights. Friends of mine from Oregon, Nevada, and California all met up at the Alvord Desert yesterday, and that will be my first stop on this trek. I'm looking forward to hanging out with this whole crew tonight. I'm eager to get to the Alvord and spend some time catching up with my friends, but I just noticed some waypoints I had completely forgotten I'd entered into Gaia GPS. It requires a minor detour along a side road, but it's early in the day, so I'm going to check it out. It says something about some ruins. This is not the ruins that we found last year when we were out here. So um, I'm just going to poke up and see if there's actually anything there. Oh, look at that. There is something out there. All right, let's go check that out. Oh. Oh, there's some kind of bees nesting in there. Oh, check this out. That's really cool. I have a second point marked on here as well. And I think it's something else that I spotted in satellite photos. Oh, I found a little road, but it is almost invisible. You can just barely see it going through there. This one's even nicer much more preserved. <laughs> oh, one more cool little artifact I found here, just right next to the road. Look at this. I don't know, I don't know what that's the door off of. George from Southwest Idaho Overlanding, who told me that he thought there were some ruins right along this road here. Sure enough, George, there were. Any trip to the Alvord Desert pretty much requires a stop at Field Station. It's the only gas anywhere near here, and the burgers and shakes are a favorite among those who visit the area. And well, there it is. The Alvord Desert is an immense lake bed that is just hard, dry dirt for a good part of the year. Almost entirely BLM land, the Alvord is a vast, roadless area that provides a unique driving experience, as nearly the entire lake bed can be driven in the dry months. This is actually one of those places that people come to attempt land speed records. It's so immense that even though there are literally hundreds of people out here this weekend for the summer solstice, it still feels open and empty and desolate.
incredible. You can just drive and drive and drive. It just keeps going and going and going. It's so fun. So I don't actually know where the crew is camped. I think they're over on the other side someplace. I saw a camp over here. Uh, there's an RV. I don't think that's my camp. I don't think that's my crew. Well, sure, why not? Plenty of room to take off or land an airplane out here. As I could see that I could drive and I didn't spot the camp of course if they're out exploring or whatever but I thought I would see I thought I would see a tent that I would recognize at least I'll keep poking at it the fringes of the Albert are a labyrinth of shrubs encroaching on the lake bed which is generally a better option for camping than out in the middle of the playa. So I wasn't surprised to see on social media that my friends had camped along the shrubby shore last night. Should make it easy to find them just by following the perimeter of the lake bed. I'm surprised I didn't find them after doing a complete tour of the lake. By some of these camps three, four, or five times now, these people must think I'm nuts. Here's the desert that I've been, I just spent half a tank of gas driving around. And they're actually here, which is way, way off over on the other side of that. Um, and I'm guessing they're probably at the hot springs. So I'm just gonna have to go on memory from last year. I've done this once before and I'm 98% positive I'm on the right road. I think I'll recognize, there's a couple of turns, but I think I'll recognize them. bit of adventure here to try and find those guys. They're up there in the hill someplace, I think.
someplace to camp in this next little patch of BLM, and then tomorrow we'll continue on with what I was gonna do on Sunday anyway. Well, it's really beautiful out here, but there's just, it's just featureless. There's no roads, there's no place to camp. There's those hills over there, but I cannot find a road up into them. I'm gonna run out of BLM land here pretty quick. Finally, I've spotted a little trail that leads away from the main road here. This is all BLM land, so the gate is not locked. I can just let myself through and close it behind me and drive on up this little side road to look for a spot to camp for the night. Well, it doesn't look like this road gets up into those craggy hills over there, which would be nice, but at least it gets me off the main road there and out of sight. If I can at least just get up over that rise, even that would be good enough. Well, it's not quite what I had planned for tonight, but there's a tent size space right there just pulled right off the road is just right there but I don't think anyone's coming up this road tonight I'm not gonna lie, today was difficult. It was a lot of work and uh, I definitely was getting tired and frustrated towards the end of the day. This ain't bad though. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. It's day two of the Eastern Oregon trip. I'm pretty happy with this campsite. Steams Mountain right there.
Hopefully today will go a little more according to plan. Uh, I don't have a huge amount of distance to go because uh, I did some of it last night. open rangeland. This is unfenced area and it looked like a horse just out there by itself. I can't tell what that is. I took a still photo as the resolution is higher than video and enlarging that it definitely appears to be a wild horse. Southeastern Oregon actually has a fairly significant population of wild horses. While this is not a native species, these horses are believed to be descendants of mustangs brought over by Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century, so they've been roaming this wilderness for hundreds of years. Soon, I'm treated to a much closer encounter with another wild horse. This isn't fenced pasture, this is just wide open BLM land. This area is called the Pillars of Rome, and apparently it was named that way because it looks like columns, so like Roman columns, I guess. Um, in fact, apparently the town of Rome that's nearby is named Rome because of these pillars. That's what I've read. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's my understanding. This is actually private land, so you can't go out onto that area. It's really cool, though. Both sides of this canyon are lined with these formations. I'm back off the highway and I'm gonna be on little desert dirt roads for the rest of the day and into tomorrow. been out in the desert in the summer it's uh, it's worth it at least once just the smell of the sagebrush there's just this smell that is unbeatable
What is most striking out here is how this vast and open desert seems to stretch endlessly into the distance. But I've plotted my route to skirt along what looked in satellite photos to be some more varied terrain. We'll see if this tiny remote trail pays off. This just gets better and better as I go. I have to keep stopping. I'll be on BLM land all day long, but it is used for cattle grazing, so there are occasional gates to pass through where roads intersect fence lines. When exploring on range land like this, it's important to leave gates exactly as you found them. If it's open, leave it open. If it's closed, let yourself through and close it behind you. I'm glad I got an early start over here today because uh, I just have to keep stopping every quarter mile. There's something else awesome to see. It just gets better and better as I go. This has to be one of the most epic drives I've ever done already. And I think it's gonna get better. I thought those were butterflies flitting around, but it turns out they're actually large grasshoppers with very pretty wings. Oh my gosh, this is just incredible out here.
The route has veered away from the canyon for now and is taking me through a never-ending series of new vistas appearing over every rise. I will be turning back towards the canyon a little later, however. At least, that's what I planned. Well, this degraded quickly. Everything that I had planned out, all the roads had been there just as I was expecting. And then one of the roads that I was expecting to be there was just not there. So I'm now taking the next road over going in the right direction. But man, it is barely visible at times. It just disappears in this growth. <sighs> Looks like it's gonna hook back up to the original route I was planning to be on. But I don't know if I see a road where... Oh, right there. All right, it's looking more like a road again. <laughs> There were a few, it, was, it was looking a little sketchy in there. And we're back on track. Well, <laughs> that was an interesting little backcountry adventure. I'm back onto a main road that's actually like got a name. And the name is the place where I'm going. So that's a good sign. I have lost count of how many of these I've been through today. All right, we've got sort of back to where we're alongside the canyon again, which is actually the goal for today. Holy cow. Look at those cliffs. Of course you get no sense of scale here, but oh man, it is massive drop. Well, that's the first people I've seen all day. I was just up there at the looking over the canyon there and I had was having a little snack when they pulled up in their trucks. They're headed in the same direction. Alright I've wanted to get down to this canyon for a long time. I'm so happy to finally be here. Let's go check it out. Those people I ran into earlier today at the canyon overlook were also headed this way and seemed to be nervous about driving this road down to the river, but I don't think this is going to pose the slightest issue for their trucks. There's those people that I ran into at the canyon overlook. They were a little nervous about coming down that road, but their trucks, I'm sure they're fine.
To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are never said I spilled my coffee, I don't feel like talking My worries just keep growing by the day I need a moment where the green and blue appear To spin a rock and watch the ricochet to the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away On the river On the river we know Sometimes the perfect words are left unsaid You could change your mind When you're intertwined with the water and the waves The intention for tonight is to camp on the gravel bar across the river. It's a more spacious area and, weirdly, there are almost no bugs on that side, unlike this side which has a lot of standing water from warm springs trickling out of the hillside. the crossing straight across is looking dangerously deep, but I'm walking some alternate lines to see what I can find. So I think we were hoping to camp more over on this side. It's sort of nice down up in there. So there's a big rock something right there. You definitely don't want to hit that. The water was definitely shallower, sort of coming across like that. Rather than going straight across, it was definitely deeper. But where it's shallower, it's also much swifter. Um, and it's still not what I would call shallow. It might be weightable, but it's a lot of current there. I don't know, I'll see what uh, George and Casey think when they show up. So I've just uh, I set up the awning for now so I could get a little bit of shade. Meanwhile, uh, I have been sweating since seven o'clock this morning. I'm gonna go down and get completely in the water. Oh man, I'm eager to just be completely wet. find this place before you end your days and if you see me out there wave hello That's George of Southwest Idaho Overlanding, and man, that is one seriously cool old Jeep. Well, that trailer's floating. That trailer's floating.
Those guys all took the deeper line straight across. I'm just refreshing myself on my planned sidetrack around that hole. I got 10 inches there. Are you sure? <laughs> Alright, I did indeed make it across. I was a little nervous about maintaining forward momentum and came in a little faster than I should have, which resulted in a wash of water up over my hood, but it was fairly superficial and ultimately the actual water level was always well below my air intake, which is up high behind the grill on the passenger side. I feel like I got a decent bow wave formed here, which you can see has created a pocket of shallower water behind it for the car to travel through. A couple of inches can make all the difference. This is the deepest moment of my crossing, and you can see I've got probably five or six inches here from the water to my intake. Beyond this point it just got shallower, but still deep enough that I was getting some buoyancy, which made it more difficult to gain traction on the slippery, algae-covered rocks. The current was stronger across the shallower riverbed, and combined with the bit of float I had, the car was getting pushed a little bit sideways but I had just enough purchase on the bottom to keep moving forward and across. This was admittedly a somewhat treacherous crossing for this car, and I never ever would attempt something like this when I'm out solo. I do like to take the opportunity to push the limits when I'm with buddies and 4x4s who can assist with the recovery if needed. Such opportunities have allowed me to gain a much better feel for just what this Forester is capable of. But a crossing like this should never be attempted when you're out by yourself. Camp all set up. I survived the river crossing. I don't get that. Well, this is George, Southwest Idaho Overlanding. He's got a YouTube channel also, and you should definitely check it out. It's thanks to him that I even found this spot in the first place. Well, thanks. This is Iro, and he doesn't trust me yet. I know you want to come see me. Hold on. Let's I know get you a do. Treat for you. <laughs> oh. Mmm. I could eat that. Lucky dog. I grow. Oh, I have rocks here. Come here. Come here. Look. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Again, super simple tonight. Just cooking up some boneless, skinless chicken thighs and some ramen. I'm just simmering that chicken in the same teriyaki sauce that I put on my tuna burger last night. All right, I mix those noodles in with the chicken, and that's looking pretty good. but I'm gonna go join the Southwest Idaho overlanding crew anyway.
So you guys probably already know who this is, uh, Casey Coyote Works, and uh, he was traveling with George uh, for the past, what, four or five? Yeah, this is day four for This us. is day four, and um, it just happened to work out that they were coming this direction. When I was coming this direction, I had this spot in mind from watching George's videos. And so we met up here last night and uh, finally got to meet Casey. So if you haven't watched Casey's channel, um, why don't you... You tell them what your channel is about. Yeah, in a nutshell, I do primarily solo kind of exploring all over Oregon. My some of my my I guess my core themes with the channel are really trying to find like the most remote places that I can, and then tracking down history is. I would say those are kind of the two themes that <clears throat> stay reoccurring. Yeah, one thing I really love about Casey's channel is the historic stuff that he finds, and he really goes into depths, he sees clues, and he finds, I mean, it's really, really fascinating. If you are interested in the historical stuff at all, this is a great channel to watch. I love the history. That That's my, real, my driving force, my passion. You know, usually it's always searching for some piece of history. And on top of that, unbelievable, gorgeous Oregon desert scenery. It's just, check it out. Awesome. Nice meeting Donald, you, Casey. Nice to meet you, man. This was really cool. It was we awesome to finally get this yeah. last yep, night. Exactly. Yeah. What I've discovered is that the water level is actually higher this morning than it was yesterday. The rock that I noticed yesterday um, is no longer making a rapid. It's actually further below the water. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit more nervous about going back across. I have no choice. This is the way we have to get out of here. We're looking at a line even further downstream. The current is much more swift, but it's significantly more shallow. It's a sharper climb up onto the bank, but looks doable. Here's the line the trucks took yesterday, and here's how I got across. This is the line we're planning to get back across the now slightly deeper river, which looks promising. We're still going into it with an emergency plan. So we found a line that is probably going to be shallow enough. We've hooked up a strap to the car just in case we need to quickly get a hold of me and pull. Worst case scenario is I might have some difficulty coming up that far bank, but I'll be out of the water and so uh, Casey can always winch me or something like that. George is going to hit it first and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, that's reassuring. It's much shallower there. That line that George took looked really good. It wasn't too deep. And uh, I think I can get up onto that same bank that he drove up onto. So I'm going to follow that same line. Uh, Casey's still going to come down anyway, just in case I have trouble getting up the bank and uh, needs to winch me up. But I think I can do what George just did. One of the things I didn't think of yesterday when I crossed was switching traction control off. And so, when I got some wheel spin between the algae on the bottom of the river being a little bit slippery and getting a little buoyancy from the water, um, the uh, traction control would have been applying brakes to some of the wheels and that is not what we need in this case. So this time I'm going to make sure I've got traction control switched off. Thanks for being there, Casey. Just in case. That ended up being easier than yesterday. Yeah. That was a better line. I feel like it came across better, much better line. 
Yep. Whew. It was easy. It was easier yeah. than yesterday. Easy. We're about ready to work our way out of the canyon and back across the desert, but we've got some fuel issues. Casey travels with ample extra fuel. However, one of his gas cans experienced a failure during their four-day trip, and he's run out of reserve fuel. Fortunately, as I fueled up yesterday morning, I've got plenty in the tank to get me to the next town. So we're using my extra gas to keep Casey rolling. Yeah, that's true. It would take three, wouldn't it? So it actually takes three, at least three. Well, now George has run out of gas, and the rest of us are taking the opportunity to air up, as we'll be back on pavement soon. We've all made it to the gas station, where we're fueling up before saying our goodbyes and heading off in various directions. All right, I've just aired down again, and uh, headed out to check out some geological features and find some place to camp for tonight. Once again, I'm out in some vast, open, middle of nowhere desert. Just nothing as far as you can see. Well, this is the road to one of my destinations out here, and it's only 
maybe three or four miles, but there I was going at most one mile an hour. Uh, that's gonna make for a long drive. I'm not sure I've got that in me. That bit was just on a hill, which is always worse where, it, where the dirt erodes away. I'll push a little further up and see what it looks like. All right, it got better quickly because it got flat. Uh, I think any place that there's going to be any sort of uphill or downhill, the rocks are probably going to be exposed. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes here. I'm mostly not bothering to film this drive on this little desert road. It's just the, the rocks aren't huge, but there's enough of them that you just have to slow down to one mile an hour or less and crawl over them. It's nothing I can't get past, but it's just slow. You just can't go any faster. A lot of them are sharp and pokey, and I don't want to get any sort of up and down movement because then the car comes down onto a rock that I otherwise would have cleared. And if I film it, it's not going to, it's not going to do it justice and it's gonna look like nothing. <laughs> so trust me, it's not that it's like hard off-roading. Anyone with, you could probably even do it in two wheel drive as long as you had a reasonable amount of clearance and some tough tires, but uh, it's just slow and fatiguing. But I'm, looks like two thirds of the way and I caught some encouraging glimpses of that canyon and I even got a vein of cell service there. So I'm glad I came out here. All right, well, here's why I came out all this way. Look at this. This is just crazy. Are you kidding me? Look at this vista. Look at that crazy terrain. I had no idea there was anything quite like this in Oregon. I just spotted this area uh, in satellite pictures. It looked like it might be interesting. I saw some deep shadows from what looked like some tall rocks. And wow. It's even better than I expected. There seem to be a couple of abandoned structures down there and an abandoned car. I was originally thinking to drive down in there, drive that road down in there and possibly camp down in there tonight. But this road is really steep and the steep part down there, I can't quite see it, but I bet it's really rocky. So I don't know, I might just walk down and, and scout it out a little bit. That last bit right there is a pretty steep climb and it's pretty loose. It's probably doable. This part down here is steep and all the dirt is eroded away and there's just lots of big rocks exposed. Okay, yeah, this road is a definite no. You probably can't tell, that's a steep climb up in this direction. And it's the kind of stuff that I probably need a little bit of momentum on, but there's some really big rocks. I'm likely to be bouncing up and down. This is a bad idea.
Cascades. Uh, I do everything I can to get off of the big groomed gravel roads and onto the small primitive trails. But boy, I tell you, on this trip, I am so happy when I hit these smooth gravel roads and get off of those rocky, gnarly little things. Oh, it's such a relief to be going more than five miles an hour. I've reached my next destination, a massive lava flow, which is some of the freshest lava in the state, dating to a little over 3,000 years ago, which is nothing in geological time. And there is even an area believed to be only around 100 years old. This flow is so recent that virtually nothing has yet managed to take root here. This is a difficult area to explore on a hot summer afternoon, and I didn't make it very far. The black lava absorbs and radiates heat, and the temperature walking along the surface of the flow can reach 120 degrees. This lava field spilled from what is known as Coffee Pot Crater. Ooh. Ooh. It's a big hole. The flow spreads out across the desert floor as far as the eye can see, and a series of spatter cone vents can be seen up here at the northwest corner of the lava field. I want to explore a little more of this lava field and maybe find some place to camp for tonight. I've heard the road may be a little much for my little forester, but when has that ever stopped me? Ooh, what is that? That is a lot of piling of stones. It seems to have been a corral at one point. These aren't small rocks. These are big rocks. I can't even imagine building this wall. Oh, check this one out. You can see the fireplace and the chimney and everything. Well, this road looked fun. Looked like it had some interesting potential. But it is really, really big rocks. They just have to crawl carefully over each one of them. Well, I suspect that road probably would have gotten better once I got past that little hill. There was probably runoff that had eroded the road and so the rocks were exposed. But I don't know. And it was getting to the point where it was gonna be difficult to back up or turn around. 
and I have to be a number of miles away uh, fairly early tomorrow to meet up with my cousin. I want to get myself so deep that it takes two hours just to get out to the gravel road. So I'm going to let that go. I have to admit there, bigger rig, bigger tires, could have just kept on going right there. So the Subaru gets me almost every place I want to go, but not absolutely every place. Uh, I saw a road going up into the hills there. It looks like it maybe it might go up to a cool campsite with a view. Well, this is pretty nice up here. I've got a view of the lava flow down there. And also another pretty nice view off that way. Well, I imagine it's gonna be a little windy up here at the top of this hill, but uh, it's a nice sight. It's like almost seven o'clock. Uh, it's been a long day. I was trying to get my car across that river this morning and then a lot of miles and driving in between. I think I'm gonna call it good. I'll deal with a little bit of wind. I suspect it'll die down as it gets darker. Well, I've situated the car so that it's blocking the wind, blocking a lot of the wind from the tent. I do think the wind will probably die down, but the car gives us a little extra wind block. Sometimes you think you're alone, but you're not alone. Dun dun dun. <laughs> As I'm sitting here looking at this scene, I feel like what is so hard to capture in these videos is just the, I don't know, the scent of the outdoors, the sense or the knowledge that there is just nobody, there's nobody anywhere near you. You're just completely alone out here. Well, <laughs> okay, 
the cow reminded me that I'm not completely alone. It started at 4 in the morning with the coyotes owling and yipping up a storm. This is what it sounded like. Immediately afterwards, the cattle started moving and they were in all directions. They're over there. They're down there. They're on the hill over there. Plus, whatever this thing is. And of course there's the birds. And the birds, that's a pleasant sound. It's really nice. But it's a sound that your brain associates with dawn and waking up. And it's time to get up and capture footage of the dawn. So it starts that morning thing. And none of that is unpleasant. It's, I mean, that's what you're out here for. Part of it is to hear all the noises of nature. <sighs> the problem with middle of June, though, is that it starts at four o'clock in the morning. So anyway, I gave up at about 4.30. I finally just got up. So this morning, I'm on my way to meet up with my cousin who lives in Nampa, Idaho, just across the Oregon border. And uh, we're going to do some exploring and camp tonight. Before I meet up with Craig, uh, I'm going to run down into the nearest town. I'm going to get some ice because I'm running low on refrigeration. And uh, also, I apparently lost my sunglasses yesterday. necessarily my first choice in style but there was a grand total of about six pair of sunglasses in that little store all right let's go meet up with Craig <laughs> yeah. so this reminds me of that old joke why did the Mormon cricket cross the road okay before you get up in arms that's not a religious slur these bugs are literally called Mormon crickets. They're about two to three inches long, and their migrations, often much more dense than what I've stumbled across here, are well known for turning roads into icy slick surfaces of squished swarming insects. All right, I've cleared the cricket crossing and continuing toward our planned meetup spot.
The route we're driving this morning is a remote yet well-groomed gravel road through an area of remarkable geological scenery. There is just nothing in western or central Oregon that compares to these imposing and vividly colored rock formations towering above us, and it just gets better and better with every turn. had a lot of water crossings over the course of this entire trip and all of the previous episodes and this one is no exception we're coming up on another one here and this is actually going to be the first time my cousin Craig has ever done any water crossing at all so he's a little nervous um, but we're gonna we're gonna walk it we're gonna take a good look and uh, I, I think his truck will get through it okay It's just impossible to capture the grandeur of these formations. If I get wide angle enough to show you the whole thing, it makes them look small. But if I zoom in, see a little bit better, you get a better sense of depth or whatever, then you just can't see how much of it is there. We are now exploring our way across the backcountry towards an area I have in mind for us to camp tonight. Due to an unusually wet spring, these grasses are still vividly green and give a false sense of lush valleys and hillsides. Don't be fooled, it's brutally hot out there and this greenery will be returning to its more common dry golden color very soon. A cabin.
Okay, so I saw this from satellite pictures when I was scouting this trip, and I thought it might be an abandoned cabin, but uh, that is not what it is. You want me to hook it up to the back? And tell it to <laughs> it's not even that old. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of old, but it's not even that old. It's still early in the afternoon, but we've snagged a shady site at a free primitive campground along a creek. When I was planning this trip, I had found some potentially interesting dispersed campsites out this way, but none of them are in the shade and I did not anticipate quite how hot it would be out here. So this tree-lined creekside site against a backdrop of striking rock formations made sense to both of us. We're taking a moment to relax after the morning's drive cool off with our feet in the water, and do some catching up. There's some interesting roads and more interesting rock formations nearby, but it's way too hot, it's just way too hot. So instead, we're just chilling here, sitting down by the creek, getting wet, and uh, catching up because uh, we haven't seen each other for a couple of years. So this is my cousin Craig. Uh, I grew up with him, we spent a lot of formative years together yeah. in our childhood yeah. and he's like he's like my brother he's like the, the brother that I don't have neither one of us have brothers neither one so. of us have brothers so and he lives in Nampa Idaho which is not very far from here so it was a great opportunity as long as I was this far over to meet up yep took me about an hour and 10 minutes from my house to get to where we met up We're grateful to have a shady place to camp next to the creek, but there's a reason or two I prefer dispersed camping over established campgrounds. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Craig and Donald's Public Camping Bingo. The only game where when you win, you actually lose. Let's take a look at our bingo card. Now, let's see how we fare today. All right, that's a bingo in two directions. We won, which means we actually lost. So, Craig and I have just been sitting here talking for, what, 45 minutes, an hour? And I just came over to the car and I hear my pump is running and my 
water jug is completely empty. There were probably still four gallons of water in that jug. And there is none on the ground, which means all that water is inside my car somewhere. There's water down on the floor mat. This is wet. What about the drawers? Looks like nothing got into the drawer. I wonder if some of it drained down into the spare tire well. That'll be easy to get to. I'm gonna have to take everything out. Holy cow. I'm gonna have to take everything out to see where the water is. Oh. Okay. And you know, I try to be conscientious about unplugging the pump and when I'm not here at the car, just in case something, and this is the one that has failed on me before. And I cut the tube and put a new one and but uh, oh, I'm gonna have to rethink that whole plumbing system because that's just, it's fine, I'm not gonna die. I've got extra bottles of water and tomorrow we'll be in town, I can get more water. But that would be, a, that could be a bad situation to lose all my water like that. I always had it in my head that even if the pump failed, I still got that, that huge jug of water I can take out. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't do any good if the stupid pump pumps all the water out. You want to try and start your car? Does it work? Do you think it killed the battery? Oh yeah, because we were sitting down there by the creek. Probably and then been, I went and wandered around and shot it's video. It's probably been two and a half hours. Then I came back and I have yeah. no idea how long that's been. Well, that's good at least. Yeah, this can go on the ground actually, it's fine. You sure? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, the seat back that was folded down. Oh yeah, you can see it. Is wet. This is soaked. Oh, okay. But you can see what the suction did to that. Yeah, I won't be using that again because we know these things are very thin plastic in the corners. I would never trust that again. Oh, that's completely soaked. Oh, that's, I mean, we're just talking about how in the river I didn't get yep. water in the car. Nope. And now I've got water in the car. Well, I have to, this may be a trip ender. I may just drive to Eugene tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was going to do another night, at before. least one more night, and I was actually. I was seriously considering doing two more nights. Oh, gotcha. Just really taking my time, making it a full week, and but yeah. I can't leave it like that. I can't have that water just sitting on the right. Okay. It doesn't feel wet there. It's wet right there, though. Yeah. Right underneath the front seat. Yeah. Well, this is not the campsite scene I was planning on filming tonight. All right, for dinner tonight, I've got something really special planned. We'll get set up here. I'd like to point out the versatility of my kitchen drawer build, because you can take it right out and set it on a picnic table. <laughs> it's, really, it's, really a, it's really a practical way to cook. All right, I'm gonna need a pan. And I'm gonna need a can of chili. So as the sun sets over the rocks, 
so does the sunset on my trip. I was going to camp at least one more night, probably two more nights, on my way back west across the state. But uh, now I think I'm just going to be driving straight back to Eugene and dealing with all of that. Well, we've got camp all broken down and packed away and we're going to hit the road. Um, under the circumstances with the loss of my water system and the existence of what must be at least three gallons of water inside my car, um, I'm going to have to cut this route short. I'm going to head back to Eugene so that I can spend the rest of my, uh, my time off dealing with, uh, with what happened there. So, um, if you've watched all the episodes so far, thank you so much. Uh, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping make this possible. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. it is we've hit the pavement and uh, it's a couple of days early but time to air up and head home So happy to see trees and clouds. I love how you can just see Wheeler's ears sticking up there in the window. I left from Eastern Oregon this morning with the intention of driving all the way back to Eugene in order to deal with the failure of my water system and the three plus gallons of water now sloshing around somewhere inside my car. But after spending hours on the open highway reflecting upon the early end to my Eastern Oregon adventure, I realized that water or not, I really want to be out here for one more night. Fortunately, my friend Jason, who has a little YouTube channel himself, happened to be rolling out this afternoon for some filming and camping. Sounds like a much nicer way to bring the trip to a close. I'm no longer in Eastern Oregon here, but up in the Cascades, and we're looking for a spot to camp. So I know I said I was headed home, but uh, since I ran into Jason and I was disappointed that my trip had been cut short, 
decided to go ahead and camp out one last night. We found a spot next to a lovely little lake here and uh, got ourselves all set up. So we're gonna cook some dinner and chill by the fire. mushrooms uh, we've got some asparagus and I've got some bacon that I'm going to fry up into some bacon bits to add with the mushrooms and the asparagus and then the steak we're just gonna throw it right over the coals of the fire and let it cook right on the coals the rest of the stuff will cook right in my little cast iron skillet my little eight inch cast Alright, so while Jason is down there cooking a fancy meal of steak and mushrooms and asparagus on the fire, I'm kind of down to the very end of my groceries, and so I'm just kind of improvising. This is just based on whatever groceries I have left. I've got cheese. And I've got some ham. And I've got a little salsa. I think I'm gonna put a little of that on there just to a little extra flavor and spice it up a bit. All right, don't tell Chris Shantz, but we're gonna call this the Venture Forward Dinner. Jason's down there making me look bad. Yeah, I had to put my sweatshirt on. It was so, it was so hot in Eastern Oregon. This is such a relief. Okay. I can't begin to tell you. Yeah, it's kind of nice to get out of the desert. And yeah. Have a lake not, and everything right beside Well, you. in trees and not have the sun beating down on you at all moments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got a little, little dessert. You like oh, Oreos? Oreos. Oreos are my favorite. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 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 I was like... <laughs>
we packed up camp quick this morning because the mosquitoes are voracious. We got everything into the rigs and we're gonna go up someplace higher with a little bit of a view and away from the mosquitoes, hopefully. That's too much for the Forester. Fortunately, I found an alternate route that connects back up and we're able to continue on our way. So uh, we finished the end of this little excursion. We're up at the top of a butte, the really nice view. Um, but it's time for me to head west and Jason's gonna head east. And so, uh, yeah. Nice evening, kind of hanging out by the fire. And, yeah. You know, fun little morning exploring and just, man, what a, what a gorgeous view up here, huh? Perfect, and just a beautiful day on top of that. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Great. Well, Good thanks to see for, ya. till next one. Yeah, till the next one, yeah. All right. From here, I'll make my way west until I hit the highway. And after an incredible week exploring the Oregon backcountry, it's time to air up and head home.